be a boy and rough and hard. I won't care what I do. What are you doing? Stop it! Don't worry, I'm ready for anything. Meanwhile, for the more wayward talent of Catherine Hepburn, things had started to go sour. She and director George Cukor teamed up again, and they bullied Pandro Berman into letting them make Sylvia Scarlet, in which Hepburn takes the perilous step of a change of gender. Now, Sylvia Scarlet, I thought, I think we just somewhere went wrong on the script because Compton Mackenzie's book is brilliant. And uh, I began to realize about four weeks in, it took us 200 years to shoot the picture. Everything had calmed down by then. And I thought, I wonder whether George Cukor thinks that this is as bad as I think it is. Because the picture starts brilliantly. And Cary Grant was wonderful in that picture, I thought. You can use a girl for a lot of things. By Jove, if only we had one, there's a badger game, 50 thing. Would a girl really help? Certainly she'd help. You can take it any mug that way. If we had a girl now, we'd be on easy street. Would we? Jimmy, we've got a little surprise for you. Yeah, what? You, who struck father, released. What's the matter with him? Oh, I don't know. Something in the paper. That's what it is about girls. Just show him a little bit of humor, affection in it. You can handle them properly. And if they get a bit too rawdy, give him a clip on the ear. Shut them aside, just like that. Get yourself another. If I were the girl, I'd see myself dead before I got mixed up with you. No, no, don't talk silly. Don't kid you me. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you. Girls talk. You wouldn't want all your secrets told, would you, Father? Now, where's the idea? Where's the idea? I've got it. Why in the world didn't I think of it before? Why? We could be on Easy Street. Well, what is Come it? Come on, spit it out. Why don't we all get jobs and go to work? Oh. Hey! And we had an awful lot of fun at the beginning of the thing. But then, it just didn't go anywhere. And it still doesn't go anywhere. It makes absolutely no sense. Natasha Palais was in it, and um, she'd never done much acting. And at one point, she, I don't know whether she was trying to drown herself or what was happening, and I said, don't worry, Natasha, I'm a very good swimmer. I will save you. And we were out on the beach in California and these huge waves coming in. Well, they toppled poor Natasha and then they hit me and I didn't know where I was. I was trying to find myself. And of course, some of the lifeguards had to rush in and save Natasha. It was really a mess, but it was a mess. It made no sense. And it still makes no sense. And we took it down to San Diego to preview. And Natasha was sitting next to me and she said, Kate, why don't they laugh? And I said, because they don't think it's funny. <laughs> and then when it ended, audience was leaving in droves. And I went down to the ladies' room and a woman was lying there, practically unconscious. And I, I said, didn't you like the picture? And she just rolled her eyes up. It was an unmitigated disaster. It was considered to be the worst A picture ever released by RKO. And here, somebody has dutifully filed away all of the preview comments. Every unkind word preserved for posterity. My only reaction was one of repugnance at witnessing such a lewd portrayal. The theme was so sordid. Even the splendid cast could not overcome the filthy insinuations. Definitely not. Overacted. Hepburn's overacting spoils what the others put into the picture. It has so many things wrong with it, I could scarcely see just where you could start doctoring it. And we went back to Kilcor's house, and Pandro met us at Kilcor's house. Of course, it had cost over a million dollars, which was a lot of money in those days. Catherine and George, who wanted to be nice to me, said, 
we know we forced you into this. We wouldn't let you off the hook. We loved it, and you hated it, and you let us make it, which was very nice of you, but we're very sorry, and we want to make up to you for it. We will both make the next picture for you free of charge. And I said, God Almighty, heaven forbid, I never want to see either one of you again. It was terribly funny, but it was a disaster. And it's why it's a success now is that the audience also now must be a disaster. At least when it was made, they had sense enough not to go. I don't understand how it could be a cult picture because it's hopeless. I know what it is that gives me a queer feeling when I look at you. There's something in you to be painted. Oh, I say, that's marvelous. I say, I wonder what it'd be like to kiss anybody with a moustache like that. I don't know. Let's try. <laughs> what do you want to do that for? Perhaps the sexual ambivalences in Sylvia Scarlet strike a chord in today's climate. But at the time, RKO was thrown into panic. Hepburn's popularity with the audiences was beginning to nosedive, and she'd never been the darling of the columnists. It was crucial for RKO to repair the damage, to find a vehicle that would restore Hepburn to public favor. <laughs> 